This lecture is on telemedicine to overview current status, reimbursement, and applications. We will start from the challenges of population health management and hospital readmissions. The current state of telemedicine will talk about details on applications, reimbursement, and our experience on readmissions in clinical services, as well as uh, future perspectives. We will also will discuss your schoolwork relationship with the informatics, the field, and the career opportunities. So CMS already map out the value-based care payment continuum. By 2022, about 85% of the services were paid based on value, not fee for service. So this actually significantly transformed the public health management from inpatient-based sick care. You have to be sick, go to hospitals, and get the care over there to all patient-based healthcare as a proactive ways prevent sickness. So this is the current main projects that uh, CMS lay out on uh, patient management focus on high risk patients. Over the last uh, several years, uh, hospital 30-day readmission reduction program has been one of the toughest of the public and health management. Initially, there's a significant decrease of uh, readmission rate, somewhere 15 to 20 percent. However, over the last uh, uh, five to six years, it has been become a uh, flat. The second is uh, accountable care organizations. They are uh, the uh, large practices combined together over 5,000 patients above to decrease uh, the cost of hospitalization and uh, share the cost savings with uh, uh, CMS, Medicare. Most recently, uh, October 2018, CMS has signed uh, agreement with over 1,300 hospitals and clinical large practices with 20% uh, incentives. Uh, if you're doing better, uh, meaning keep the patient out of hospital over 90 days or 20% penalties if the patient readmitted to hospital. When you look at the patient population versus the cost, the paradigm is very skewed. Five to 25% of the population actually cost 50 to 87% of the whole US healthcare expenditures. Uh, especially the top 5%, 50% of cost just to cover those small group of patients. So over the last uh, five, six years, when you look at the US, the overall readmission rate decreased only 1%, but in Florida, actually it's worse, only 4.4%. This is a top 25 hospitals with uh, the worst readmission rate and the revenue loss with the top of a few uh, in, the, uh, in Florida. Going back to the history, actually uh, telemedicine started about two or three years ago, uh, two or three decades ago, excuse me, and started the tele-radiology with remote interpretations and reading uh, images. Uh, recently, 
a couple of years ago, telemedicine really going into primary care. And you can get the 24 seven services with the minor uh, problems, urgent uh, problems such as cold, sinusitis. You can pay 45 to $50 per visit, 24 seven to see a physician get a prescription. The, from the specialties, cardiology, neurology, dermatology, pulmonary surgery, even ICU has been also expanded significantly uh, with uh, the further development of technologies of the sensors uh, as well as communications. Over these last uh, uh, four years, uh, since uh, uh, January 1st, 2015, Medicare started reimbursed telemedicine. The field has been expanding uh, significantly with in the facilities, uh, with uh, in the uh, underserved area. Actually, physicians can provide a virtual visit and uh, get reimbursed the same as a physical on-site visit in the office. Uh, for the remote patient monitoring, uh, over the last year, actually compared to this year, the fees uh, literally doubled. The specific area of uh, telecare uh, is really um, expanding significantly. It's on the uh, risk sharing models, uh, especially for HMOs, MSOs, Medicare Advantage plans, and the ACOs uh, with uh, share savings, mainly cut down the hospital expenditures. So this is a map to lay out of the uh, parity law to cover uh, telemedicine uh, 2018. You can see uh, many states and uh, the parity law already implemented, meaning in those states, um, uh, the insurance companies they have to uh, cover telemedicine as the same as the in-office uh, physical on-site visit. Uh, you can see uh, there are a few states, including Florida, the power of law has not been uh, implemented yet. Although uh, last uh, a few years, uh, Florida lawmakers and the providers have been discussing of the uh, uh, the opportunities and uh, try to uh, yeah, uh, catch up with the rest of these other states. So Doxling Health, uh, our group, is a Florida-based multi-specialty group, uh, telemedicine practice, led a technology company uh, funded uh, since uh, 2014. So our mission is bringing hospital-level care to patients anytime, anywhere and uh, developing a next generation telemedicine public and health management with the ecosystem and multiple platforms to provide uh, enable physicians uh, for on-site uh, care uh, physically and uh, virtual care online uh, remotely. Uh, we are focusing the uh, post-acute care continuum from hospital to office we have uh, facilities, assisted living, home health, all the way to patient care at home. So let's analyze uh, what are the uh, key problems of uh, readmission. So when patients discharge from uh, tertiary hospitals and to the post-acute care space, so on one side, the sending side, Patients discharge much earlier from hospital compared to 15 years ago. Therefore, more sicker patients moving to outside of hospital to the post-acute care space. On the receiving end, these post-acute care facilities lack of uh, hospital infrastructures without 24-7 services. Therefore, when the patient is sicker, they have to go to back to hospital. So therefore, the problem is both end. The early discharge from the hospital, then lack of hospital infrastructure 
from post acute care. So therefore, in order to really improve the care and the post acute care, is the space to improve the level of the services to decrease unnecessary hospital admissions or readmissions. So with this uh, uh, principle, and uh, we created this uh, uh, on-site and online, we call inter-reality care. Basically, it's uh, uh, in addition to hospital and clinic of the conventional care, we have on-site care physically, bring the uh, imaging, uh, lab tests, and uh, uh, physician uh, visit, as well as online care, remote monitoring, and, uh, and televisit. So we have many components of the uh, tele-hospital and uh, tele-services, telemedicine services. Uh, one of the main components is the equipment. In addition to the simple blood pressure, pulse ox, glucometers, weight scale, we bring to a hospital level of uh, EKGs, pulmonary function tests, sleep studies, uh, imaging, and labs to patients at home. The technology only enable uh, are the enablers. Uh, we have to provide all the physician uh, expertise. So we have uh, 12 uh, areas of uh, uh, specialties uh, from cardiology uh, to uh, GI, endocrinology, and neurology. And we have a significant growth uh, over the last uh, several years. So this is uh, the way we provide all the care. So patients uh, can be at home or at a facility. Uh, remotely connect with specialty physicians. The physician can see the patients and as well as the EKGs and labs on, on the cell phone. So therefore, uh, create a loop uh, with uh, the remote uh, monitoring and uh, the analytics. One of the major component is uh, protocols and the way we are trying to bring a hospital level care to implement hospital level of the uh, care protocols or order sets. And in general, we uh, provide of, uh, four different components, uh, science symptoms, uh, standard test, standard treatment, and also admission criteria. So therefore, when uh, uh, clinicians and patient uh, homes we can uh, provide uh, the uh, hospital level care in, uh, with the support of the technology. So with the technology and services, we integrate the, the uh, care process from hospitals, uh, clinics, we have hospitals, home health, uh, pharmacies, all the way to patient home with online uh, remote monitoring, uh, connect with the uh, data, database and analytics uh, to, uh, to, be, to enable the whole process. We have our big uh, data analytics uh, platforms with uh, uh, patient-centered uh, data mark and uh, uh, data extraction mappings and the procedure utilization management. This is one of the uh, examples you can see. Uh, trend of the data to really tease out of the meaning for um, information uh, in the data over time. So now I'm going to give you a couple of examples. This is actually is the first patient from a Cleveland clinic, 81 years old with multiple risk factors. He had a coronary disease, a heart attack, a cardiomyopathy with low ejection fraction. Uh, heart failure, renal failure, and GI bleed. He had a bypass surgery with redo uh, many years ago, uh, and uh, followed by uh, uh, stents uh, for the grafts. A patient had developed atrial fibrillation with ablation 2016 with intermittent uh, bleed, GI bleeding uh, and, uh, with uh, uh, blood thinners. Uh, he was uh, uh, admitted and readmitted 
uh, four times over a two month period and uh, home care requested uh, in August uh, uh, yeah, 2016. And they uh, uh, actually the first time when they asked me to ask the, to t take care of the patient, I was really hesitating uh, to take the patient. So I actually went to the patient home and checked the patient out along with our nurse, nurse and uh, nurse practice nurse. So at the patient at home, the vital sign is pretty stable. The pulse ox is kind of borderline. Uh, they clearly you can see the patient have uh, uh, problems, especially significant edema uh, uh, to all the way to mid cock and with uh, uh, a wrap around uh, of, the, uh, of the low extremity is all soaked. So I ask the patient walk, it's only walk less than uh, you know, uh, a minute, 23 feet. The blood pressure dropped, pulse is high, and the oxygen levels are low. So when I saw this, I said, well, now I see the problem, then I, I can uh, uh, take care of the patient. So in fact, I, you know, I was uh, uh, seeing the patient with telemedicine every day for 30 days. I learned the process. So initially you can see the patient have a lot of edema with just medications, and the edema over time a significant decrease. The bloody stool is, uh, you know, uh, kind of controlled. Shortness of breath improved. The weight is uh, decreased, and the walking times uh, uh, improved, uh, as well as uh, the distance and the oxygen level uh, uh, they improved as well. So the patient really doing better. So at the follow up, no 30 day readmissions. Uh, we're very successful, very happy and follow up with the hospitals and they were actually very happy as well. The patient was admitted, readmitted to uh, 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 several months later uh, with a GI bleed and uh, which led to uh, uh, worsened uh, heart failure, but no readmissions uh, since August 11 for five months. This patient actually is the first patient for Memorial with uh, multiple risk factors as well. Got a heart attack, a stent, bypass surgery, low pumping function, defibrillator, two mechanic valves, chronic renal failure, uh, COPD, oxygen 24 7. Six animation rate means over five months, first part of 2016. Uh, actually, the primary care went to the patient home um, uh, because of uh, significant shortness breath called me and said, Mike, the guy's really sick. I'm ready sent to a hospital. Very sure, no pneumonia, but I don't know how bad the heart failure is. And I said, well, let's get the patient uh, to, to the office. Let's see. So the, we went to uh, Epic and checked the patient. The, this is the last uh, admission. The patient walking the ER and uh, become unresponsive. The nurse jump on him and start chest compression. The nurse get a shock uh, from the patient defibrillator. He was intubated, stayed in the ICU hospital over 14 days. And actually at the discharge, the uh, doctors at the hospital told him, you got to go to the hospice or at least go to nursing home. And uh, because, uh, you know, you just end the uh, stage. So I saw the patient and I, I, I did agree with the memorial and told the patient that you gotta go, go to a nursing home. And he looked at me, he said, well, and, um, I, I don't, I, because I'm Cuban. I said, what that mean? And he said, I don't have vocabulary for uh, hospice and uh, I'd rather die at home. So with this, it's very challenging. And uh, actually I actually went to his house and checked him out. I talked to the uh, wife, talked to a uh, daughter and, and grandkid, a great Cuban family. I said, okay, all right, so let's give it a try. So we put it in uh, your know, device at home, provide on-site and online uh, monitoring and care and with uh, the tablets, uh, blood pressure, with scales. Also, we have a uh, technology uh, wireless read intracardial leads for his impedance to a set heart failure. And uh, 
In addition, we provide labs even as of today, and the Sierra uh, uh, doing labs at his home on uh, a weekly basis uh, because he is taking blood thinner and, uh, for his uh, mechanic valve. So the first time I saw him was uh, uh, September 2016 until today, about 25 months, no admission, readmissions, knock on wood. So the, actually that is the example we got a patient into a uh, memorial. So this is another patient of uh, uh, yeah, 70 years old, got uh, risk factors, got atrial fibrillation, ablation uh, twice, and one day he got a chest pain and palpitation. This is uh, seven o'clock in the morning, and when you know he did EKGs, come to my phone, so he did come back to atrial fibrillation. For the standard care, I saw today, this kind of new patient, you on Saturday AFib, he need to be admitted for a couple of days, Need to be put on a blood thinner for three months. So since we have a device with him, so we hit him hard with strong medications. Seven hours later, he convert back to normal sinus rhythm. No hospital admissions, no blood thinners for three months. So there's a new standard of care might be coming very soon due to a new technology being able the new service. So last example is a 87 years old um, uh, veteran in World War II. Actually, he was in Manhattan Project with uh, multiple medical problems, uh, including uh, Parkinson's and heart problems, heart attacks. And uh, he uh, came to our office. We did a tra traditional EKG. You can see there are a lot of zigzags of um, noise in baseline because of uh, Parkinson. In fact, he called uh, November and uh, with chest pain and after evaluation uh, from the ambulance uh, crew and uh, they told him uh, he's fine and don't need to go to the hospital. So a month later, uh, one day before Christmas Eve, he developed a very similar chest pain. Uh, the family thought, well, you know, last time, there's probably a false uh, alarm. Last time an uh, ambulance already came, it didn't do anything. Um, so probably because of uh, Christmas uh, stress, church, uh, but we have this uh, EKG and uh, you know, the package and uh, let's, uh, let's do EKG. So therefore they did EKG and come to my phone. So I was really shocked, you know, although they still have some uh, noise due to his Parkinson's, but clearly you can see the SD elevations in the inferiors and the laterals, and clearly uh, and, uh, as well as the uh, actual reciprocal change on the, on the anteriors, meaning he had multiple areas of uh, blocked arteries and acute uh, heart attack, the worst kind. So I uh, told the patient uh, start some medications and then we'll go to hospitals immediately. And then I'll call the hospitals and talk to the cardiology and have him to come down to the ER to wait for him, not wait uh, outside of the uh, ER for three hours. So um, he actually, uh, cardiology came to the ER wait for him before his arrival. And quickly uh, he passed the, the ER and went to the cath lab while the patient was preparing for the intervention. And this is what happened. He got a cardiac arrest. But this is the right place, right time. The patient was uh, resuscitated successfully, put a couple of stents, four days later, walk out from hospital. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the future of health. The patient heart attack is remotely diagnosed in his bedroom before his cardiac arrest. So that's why I see clearly the telemedicine will shake 
the paradigm of the healthcare, bring hospital level care to patient homes, not only save the money, but also save the life. So from the financial point of view, actually we did a study with Memorial uh, over last year, and out of uh, 112 patients, this is patient before of this, uh, this study, uh, is a hospital and clinic and memorial only. Then after we started the study, is memorial and the Dux Inc. In addition, we add on on site online, online. So over time, you can see the admissions, readmission dramatically decrease, 75 to 86%. The bottom line is with total saving 4.86 million. So actually the healthcare system, the industry has been uh, shifting. And uh, the Chronic Care Act just passed last year. And with uh, this year estimated over 20 million patients uh, the, from the uh, Medicare Advantage plans and will be evaluated and seen and covered uh, at home. So it's a significant uh, increase. So from the future perspective, telemedicine is here today with technologies and services reimbursement. So this is actually a quote from uh, uh, Kaiser Permanente in uh, California. 52% uh, of uh, 110 million clinical interventions uh, were done uh, with uh, smartphones, video conferencing, kiosks, and other technology tools and, uh, uh, sim uh, in uh, uh, telemedicine. So why telemedicine is big for informatics and for your career? This is ongoing evolution of history and uh, the digital transformation and people call the fourth industrial revolution. The EMR built really digital foundation of the healthcare uh, you know, for the healthcare industry, uh, but how to deliver digital health for better, faster, and cheaper care at the same time. So telemedicine is the best and effective way to deliver of these services of the solutions. From the job market point of view, EMR implementation under uh, High Tech Act and uh, of the uh, Twenty billion dollars, the money is per, is gone, and because the EMR implementation phase uh, is pretty much finished. But however, the EMR operation right now in the uh, current state is uh, very costly, and uh, therefore the hiring of uh, informatic people and uh, for EMR compared to implementation phase uh, many years ago and the dramatic decrease. However, telemedicine is new and is revenue generating short, not a cost uh, short. So that's why I really believe if you learn telemedicine, I'll be a much a better uh, job market. So we have many uh, telemedicine ongoing projects at DocsLink uh, from uh, hardware, wearables, uh, apps, patient engagement, physician, uh, pharmacy engagement, insurance, and uh, uh, readmission analytics. So many, many projects because we're the ones actually performing, delivering, implementing of the telemedicine process. So in summary, telemedicine expanding in a rapid pace to redefine the availabilities, quality, and cost of healthcare, post-acute care, are facing significant challenges on readmissions that telemedicine has been proven with a significant impact. So the question really turned to you is, are you ready uh, for the telemedicine trainings and the practicum? Uh, please contact me. This is my uh, contact info, uh, emails, uh, and uh, phone numbers. Uh, with that, I'd like to uh, open up uh, for future uh, questions.